upgrading a webcam-based YouTube studio to full broadcast quality for under $3,000. Let's put this project into context. Over the past year, many of us have become all too familiar with webcam-based conferencing. We've even become familiar with the homes of news anchors and TV stars, as programs normally broadcast from a studio have been streamed from spare bedrooms, attics, and basements across the world. Higher resolution webcams like the $200 Logitech Brio even capture video at 4K, but even though some webcams have 4K cameras, Many home broadband connections can't handle upstreaming at that speed. Many can't even handle 1080p. The gotcha is that while you can replace your webcam, you're generally stuck with whatever broadband provider is in your neighborhood. You may be able to purchase more bandwidth if the network connection to your home can handle it, but if your area doesn't have high capacity pipes, you're stuck with whatever's in your community. But what if you need to do broadcast quality interviews or roundtables? You need to be able to stream so the participants can interact, but your pipes won't pump the high resolution video in real time. What do you do? What do you do? My name is David Gewurz and you're watching ZDNet's YouTube Studio project series which is part of my DIY IT column. In DIY IT, we explore 3D printers, build projects with maker and smart home technology, stress test servers, fly drones, and regularly dive deep into advanced geekery for fun and profit. You may have noticed this is called the YouTube Studio Project Series. In this episode, we're going way beyond YouTube quality. I'm going to be upgrading my Talking Head Studio from its webcam roots to what can be legitimately called Cinema Grade. I won't say this is an inexpensive project, but it's generally within the budgets of most small businesses. I'm going to use about $3,000 worth of video gear, gear that just a few years ago would have cost 10 to 50 times that amount. Let's start with the problem statement. The problem I had to solve. I've done hundreds of in-studio streamed video interviews. In fact, this area was set up to do just that. But last month, one of ZDNet's clients asked me to appear as a subject matter expert. This wasn't even slightly unusual since that's a big part of my job. What was unusual was that the client wanted true broadcast quality video. They were not content with what could be captured through Zoom or what even a high quality webcam could produce. They wanted original raw video from a cinema grade camera and they wanted it as part of a Zoom conversation. Their plan was to dispatch camera crews to the homes of the host and the two subject matter experts. And those crews would both record local super high quality video and stream to sustain the conversation. Then later in post-production, editors would cut together the three pure raw cuts into a final video. The idea of a full camera crew lugging gear and traipsing through our home did not sit well with either my wife or I. And besides, I already have a couple of dedicated studio spaces. Why not simply upgrade this one to meet the broadcast level requirements of the client. And that's what I did. Over the next few minutes, I'll show you how. To meet the production requirements, I had to be able to stream 1080p video to Zoom while simultaneously recording 4K raw or better video locally. The stream would allow the speakers to speak to each other, but the editors would use the raw video for their production work. Also, I had to capture a high quality lossless version of only my side of the conversation. All of these files would be uploaded immediately after the shoot was done. I had a starting point. I already had broadcast quality sound. My mic is this gorgeous handmade Ear Trumpet Labs Edwina. I've loved it ever since Ear Trumpet Labs sent it to me. It's popular among performers and sound engineers. Other elements of the sound system include the Mackie Pro FX mixer and the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 interface. I also had a cinema grade camera the Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema Camera 6K. I reviewed it last year mostly for the ability to capture 6K and use it for super tight zooms in post-production. I decided to pull it off the shelf and press it into service as the camera for this special video. The BMP CC 6K is capable of 6K video and Blackmagic RAW is a format capable of very flexible and super high quality color grading. Before I get started talking about how I used it and the Blackmagic A10 Mini, I need to give a shout out to the Blackmagic design folks. 
When this project hit my to-do list, I reached out to the press relations team I worked with last year. Those folks spent hours with me working out the best approach for this, walked me through the setup, and even answered some very panicked questions the weekend before the shoot. So huge thanks to the Blackmagic team. I also had the Blackmagic A10 Mini, a very nice switcher. Unfortunately, the Mini alone didn't give me the level of control I needed for this project, so I reached out to the Blackmagic folks and they swapped it for the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro, which is over here. And it's what I installed for this project. I purchased two upgrades for the camera, a cage and a Samsung T5 SSD. The cage made it easier to mount the camera on my tripod and behind the teleprompter and also had a custom bracket to hold the SSD. My quick release adapter system worked just as well here as in the shop studio. I have quick releases on the tripod, the teleprompter, and on the Blackmagic camera cage. The Samsung T5 SSD is one of Blackmagic's approved devices because it's fast enough to record the enormous quantity of video as it's generated. I picked up a one terabyte model, which was enough for more than about three hours of recording at 12 to one compression and 5.7K, which was the format I settled on for this project. This is clearly a popular SSD for this camera because the cage has an adapter designed to fit it. The way the drive slides smoothly into the adapter is very satisfying. A USB-C connector from the drive to the camera completed this part of the solution. I ran an HDMI cable from the camera to the A10 Mini Pro. The A10 Mini Pro converted the camera's output to something Zoom and other programs would think came from a webcam. This is a very powerful capability of the A10 Mini and the A10 Mini Pro because the Mini allows a ton of production and switching work to occur, all of which is piped to Zoom as if it came from a basic webcam. I also had an Ethernet connection to the A10 Mini Pro. This allowed me to use the A10 control software on my Mac to color correct the camera's raw output on the fly. It also has a focus button which triggers the camera's autofocus, so my face for radio was in focus, blemishes and all. Finally, I had a USB connection from the A10 Mini Pro to my Mac. This allowed me to feed the color corrected video right into Zoom's webcam interface. I also used two iPads in the solution. One iPad connected to the camera and controlled the exposure on the fly. This was important because when it's daylight, I want to lower the ISO, but when it's night, I want to increase the ISO. Since I need to see how the exposure changes my face, I have to be in front of the camera, not behind it. By moving the controls to the iPad, my face can be in camera and I can control the settings. The Blackmagic Camera Control iPad app also allows me to start and stop recording, again, so I can stay on set and control the camera. The only thing I found odd was that the focus button is in the ATEM control application on the Mac, while the ISO and recording controls were on the iPad app. My second iPad was used to maintain sightline to the other guests. By using a virtual screen app, in this case screens, I connected into my Mac and mirrored the zoom call that was on my Mac screen onto the iPad. That iPad was placed inside the teleprompter. Now I could look at and talk to the other guests by looking straight into the camera. Sure, you can do all of that without the teleprompter, but I'm not an actor by nature and I find it very hard to maintain a sight line without looking at the person I'm talking to. For sound, we settled on two recordings. For some reason, the monitor sound output of the mixer just would not record on the Blackmagic camera. So I sent the headphone monitor output to the camera instead. That gave the camera not only my track, but all the speakers. To be able to provide a single track with just my voice, I used Audio Hijack on my Mac. This program does all sorts of audio routing magic, and in this case, it captured the audio signal destined for input to Zoom and recorded that isolated channel to a file. All told, video was recorded on the camera and sent to Zoom. Multi-channel audio was recorded by the camera, my single channel was being recorded on the Mac, and that same channel was sent to Zoom. It all worked, and I completed the event. You've been watching me on the new camera rig for the past few minutes. But here you can see the difference between the webcam and the cinema camera setup. On the left is the video recorded in an earlier interview using the Brio webcam. On the right is the video recorded here with the Blackmagic camera. What do you think of the difference? I have links here and in my ZDNet article for the various products I used. And with that, another big shout out of thanks to Bob and the team at Blackmagic. For ZDNet's DIY IT, 
My name is David Gewertz. Go out there and broadcast something awesome.